get started while people trickle in here. Um, thank everyone for coming. Today we're just going to do uh, what we hope to be a monthly kind of to-do list program for each month. Uh, we'll kind of just touch on some light areas. Uh, we can always go into depth later or you can come in and ask specific questions. Um, but we're going to do kind of a summer to fall transition today and talk about some of the things maybe you consider doing in your garden um, going into fall. And we'll do a slideshow um, to begin with. I'll show you all a few plants and then we will open it up to questions at the end. So today we're going to talk about a garden to-do list. Um, everyone should be muted, um, so we shouldn't have to worry about people talking over each other. All right, uh, so today's going to be garden to-do list for September. Today is the first, so fall is coming. So uh, get ready, everyone's getting excited. Um, we've definitely started getting a lot of plants coming in and this is just the start of it. So um, please come in and look at what we have and uh, be excited about what's coming down the pipeline. So we're just gonna touch on a few things. Um, the big thing I would probably be doing right now is just looking at our beds, soils, freshening everything up <clears throat> so we can relax and enjoy the, the fall weather. Um, soil and bed, bed prep, sorry. Um, adding nutrients, especially to your veggie gardens and all your landscape beds is a good idea. Um, and this is pretty easy to do. Um, just a top dressing, basically. You can go, you know, as thin as an inch thick uh, in a lot of these cases just to add nitrogen to our beds. Um, I do want to mention Earth Mix, our products that we make here uh, at the Bates Nursery property. Earth Mix Supernatural and Magic Mushroom are two great compost products that you can use to top dress your beds uh, and give them a little boost going into fall. Uh, as well as if you're planting, um, you definitely want to amend your soils as you plant. I don't necessarily think that you need to uh, redo your entire beds to condition the soil, um, but our landscape mix, uh, Earth Mix product that we also make in house, as well as pea fines uh, for your more heavy soils and drainage issues mixed 30 to 50 percent with um, your existing native soil uh, I think is a, a good recipe for success when planting this time of year. Uh, as well as soil amending, uh, mulching is a great thing to do right now. Um, something that commonly gets forgotten is to remove all that excess mulch before we put new stuff on. Um, especially if your mulch is creeping up on the trunks of your plants or really burying those roots. It's a good idea to remove that old before you put the new on there. And, and really whenever I mulch, I do it in the fall just to add color. So really just enough mulch to make your beds pop um, until springtime. Uh, and again, try not to bury the stems and roots under mulch. Um, on the slide there, you can see our Earth Mix products. Um, any number of them, we make quite a few in-house. Um, really great, tried and true, um, and, and they'll be a really good addition as a top dressing. Uh, I do want to mention seeding. Um, so vegetable seeds for fall veggies might be a, a good idea to get them started right now. Um, you know, assuming they're going to take about a month or so to come up and be ready for planting. Um, Proganics Eye is a product we make in-house. Uh, and that's great to start your seedlings and there's also various seed mixes um, and those would all be great for starting in trays. Uh, the other type of seeding, the lawn seeding, is, is probably a great thing to do September through December. Um, the big thing that a lot of folks miss out on is the core aeration, uh, especially if you haven't had an aeration done in a few years. Uh, every five years is, is really a good idea at least. Um, the hollow core aeration is a machine you can rent or purchase um, to literally pull plugs out of your ground um, to one, reduce soil compaction, and two, increase soil contact of your fescue seeds in the fall. Um, this is really going to help your germination success. Uh, there's a funny little picture there on the slide of someone aerating with a pitchfork. Um, this would be the most difficult method. Um, definitely you can do it. They make shoes with spikes on them to aerate. Um, but these hollow core aerators are really the, the best way to do it. Um, so cool season grasses is what we're talking about, not Bermuda or Zoysia or any of those warm seasons, but tall fescue 
Um, we've already gotten plenty of seed in right now. Um, September through de se September through December um, is the the realm that I like to seed in. You can also top dress uh, lightly with soil. Uh, I prefer this over straw just to increase the soil contact and get the most germination you can. Give you all a little rule of thumb, um, just because we've seen some of this lately, plants kind of being held till fall. A lot of times it's great to get this plant in the ground as soon as you can, even if it is hot. Uh, anything that we have on the lot that's container grown really um, doesn't have any issues acclimating. It's already acclimated to our hot lot and it's best to just go ahead and stick it in the in the ground and not hold off till cooler weather. Your, your ground is going to act as a buffer. Um, it's going to help hydrate your plants and it's also going to reduce heat stress. Um, so go ahead and get those plants in the ground, keep them well watered uh, through fall. General maintenance this time of year, uh, you can definitely do weed control. Uh, I recommend spot weed control, anything that's labeled for a specific weed that way we're not just doing general broadcast weed control. Uh, I will mention that warm season annuals like crabgrass, a few others, are about to crash anyways. So a lot of those you might consider just hand pulling um, as they start to die off. I mentioned mulch, a great time just to add some color to the beds. Less is more. Um, it doesn't need to be three, four inches thick to do its job. I mean, you can put uh, a good one inch layer and that'll help keep winter weeds down and also just make your, your plants pop. And then watering, you know, we don't wanna forget that this time of year, uh, very well could remain warm through October. Um, so no break right now, um, keep, your, keep your watering schedule. If you have a good one going, just go ahead and keep that through September. Water heavily on initial planting is key and then allow those plants to start drying out before you soak them deeply again. And then you can kind of create a schedule based on that. And I will shortly mention cutbacks. I wouldn't be doing a whole lot of it this time of year, but as your perennials and annuals really start to crash, um, that's a good time to cut them back. Herbaceous perennials, um, cutting those at the base, hosta is a good example. Hostas probably aren't quite crashing yet, but probably by the end of September, early October, as you see those lay on the ground turn brown, cut them off at the base, it'll make everything look a lot cleaner. As well as annuals, um, my uh, petunias are pretty much done in my pots. I'm probably just gonna rip those out from the root before I plant some new plants in there. And then shrubs, um, deciduous, summer blooming, the meaning they lose their leaves, um, summer blooming shrubs, you, know, you could start to cut back. Um, Spirea is one that I could think of that, that probably is going to crash a little bit early. Um, any of these that you really need to pull down and shape. Um, but if you aren't sure about whether to cut it back or not, you could definitely wait um, till cooler weather, October, November, once their leaves start falling, uh, makes it a little more of a sure thing to cut them back and not get winter burn. And this is really going to be specific to evergreens too. So hollies and things of that nature, we really don't want excessive new growth in a month or two before we get a frost. Slideshow catch up. Uh, one more rule of thumb. Um, cutbacks in the fall should be on summer bloomers only. So things that are blooming, just got done blooming, um, those are the things we should be cutting back. Uh, avoiding evergreens if we can. Uh, a little note on planting. A lot of people ask, is it a good time to plant? Is it okay to plant? Definitely, you can have a lot of success planting right now. Um, fall is considered ideal, but there's no reason you can't do it right now. As long as you get them in the ground, um, when you get these plants home as soon as you can, um, water regularly, water deeply, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, I do want to mention why people talk about fall for planting. Uh, plants have few leaves or no leaves, so transportation becomes easier. We don't get wind burn or transplant shock on these leaves. Cooler weather means we have less environmental stress, whether that's insects or diseases tend to cool down as the weather does. 
uh, as well as drought stress, so just heat affecting these plants. And the last thing is trees and shrubs tend to spread roots as the weather cools down, um, which just means they establish quicker for us and, and they're ready for springtime. And a little note on kind of your recipe for success planting in September. Um, get the plants in the ground as, as soon as you can. Uh, water deeply on initial planting. I, I've heard um, professionals call this mudding in, uh, meaning you soak them so deep that you are actually going to have a very muddy soil. Um, and that's okay. You want to really soak that soil system and then let it dry out. Uh, and again, if, if it dries out, um, that's what we're looking for is almost drying out that soil, water deeply, and then continue on that schedule. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about fall colors, uh, and I'll mention some of these, and I've got some around me here that I can mention. Um, what is looking good on the lot and what, what's going to look good here in September? Uh, we, do, we are starting to get our fall annuals, perennials in, so pansies, mums, asters, uh, there's a whole slew of them. Uh, we should be getting our first pansy shipment any day now, so um, time to start thinking about planting your cool season annuals, uh, as well as foliage plants. So ornamental veggies, something that I have a lot of luck with. Here, got them right here. Um, so ornamental cabbage, you know, these are really just meant to go in pots, arrangements, beds. Um, you've got kale, cabbage, chard. Um, they can really hold up all the way through winter if they're in a good protected spot. So that's when we're talking about foliage, just the color of the leaves really setting that pot off. Um, ivies, and there's all sorts of spilling things that will last through the winter. Shrubs and perennials, so this is really, we're starting to get into our fall show, um, probably towards the end of September, October, if, if the weather cooperates with us. Uh, some of my favorites, and, there, and there's a ton of them out there, uh, maples, October Glory um, is one of my favorites. A lot of people like Autumn Blaze, which I believe this picture on the screen is of, uh, has a really nice red color. Black gum has become a really big plant in the south for us. Wildfire black gum has the red tips, and in the fall it's going to be just a kaleidoscope of color. Blueberry, I think these are definitely underappreciated for fall color. It's typically going to be a really bright red uh, in the fall. Father Gila, uh, which I do have one behind you, behind me right here. Father Gila has a similar color to black gum. Uh, it, it is also a native plant, and it's just going to be a kaleidoscope of color. Oranges, reds, yellows. Um, and then some spireas. Uh, I do have a candy corn behind me. Candy corn spirea is going to give you that kind of Halloween-y color, and they should last uh, up into October. And then there's also fruit that's starting to color up. Uh, so I do have a deciduous holly up here, and it's starting to color up its berries. They're not quite bright red yet, but they're getting there. Um, it's a good idea to start thinking about those berry colors and hollies, viburnum, and then some of the stem color associated with these plants, like red twig dogwood tends to brighten up as it gets colder. Um, I do have to give a shout out to one of my personal favorites, Hearts of Bustin. That's the picture in the lower right corner. Um, they're really not showy most of the year, but in the fall, uh, it, it's one native plant that I think gets overlooked, and when they open up, um, it's hard to forget them. And then the last thing I think is going to really look good in September are ornamental grasses. Uh, I do have, I believe, Cassian fountain grass uh, behind me. Uh, muley grass gets showier in the fall as it gets that purple color. Uh, pampas grass has the, the big plume, so if you're looking for big, showy, uh, pampas, and then switch grass for more of the, the naturalized environments. And let me see here. I can probably make the screen a little bigger. Okay, and I'll, I will mention a couple plants here. Um, mums, we did talk about some of the annuals. So mums have come in. You know, mums really don't have the longest season, but there's nothing more showy than a mum, especially September, October. Uh, autumn fern, these usually start pushing out with cooler weather and you do get a lot of the fall color in autumn fern. Uh, so that's a really great choice for shade to, to part sun. Sedum. 
So sedums really do start blooming in the fall, and this is, I believe, Autumn Joy. Um, and it will get kind of a pink to a red bloom on it, uh, and this will really start showing off in September in your beds. Like I said, deciduous holly behind me is a blueberry. And this is going to be a little more indicative of, of the color on the blueberries, but you can see they really will get a nice red tone um, as it cools down. And then I will mention Father Gila, that's this one right here. Um, a really great native plant, uh, blooms in the spring, and the fall color is just unbeatable on these. And I'm sure there's a number of other plants I didn't mention, um, and we'll try to have it in here for you if it looks good. Uh, one last fact, just in case you all are curious, um, pretty soon we're going to go through fall senescence. Usually it's October, November around here, um, but that's just the fact that um, as trees drop, their leaves they start to establish roots and this is this is senescence and it's just the process of the sugars coming out of the leaves and the plants giving us all that great color and moving down to the roots um, and that process really is what makes it a great time of year to plant all right that's all i have for y'all on the slideshow i uh, just want to say thank you all for for attending another one of these uh, bates nursery bo botany boot camps um, and we're going to open it up to questions